Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about community over competition. A little about me. I started LLG events less than five years ago. And I'm a newbie on the block. I co-founded this with my husband and business partner, Paul, who's sitting right here, who's my biggest support system, and actually would volunteer with me every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at events every single weekend while I simultaneously was still conducting my research and development job in New York's uh, medical uh, lab. So I started LLG events and eventually expanded into the global international market. Um, I love my weddings, I love my brides, I love everything about weddings and I think it's beautiful and I want to talk about how to collaborate effectively with one another. So our wedding community, so within any community everyone has individual roles and responsibilities. Their role is defined by their titles and we know what those rules of engagement mean and how to work with one another. And I think part of the biggest issue that we've had in our industry is what is everybody's title? Are you an event planner? Are you an event producer? Are you an event coordinator? Are you an event stylist, an event designer? There are so many titles within our industry, but what do they actually mean? What are your roles in the community? What are you accountable for on the event day or prior to? And how do you work with other vendors if you have all these different titles? Now, I'm not here to define these titles for you. Everybody has based on their experience, based on their culture, their region, what these titles mean to them. However, I think there needs to be a little bit more universal collaboration as to who does what on the wedding day, who's responsible for what, and this way we can now collaborate and promote the community over competition. So who is in your community? Your community is your network. Who are they? What are the services that they provide? What's their reputation like? And a lot of times, we don't really talk about these things. Well, we, I mean, we talked about it at the commissions today, and I got, we got very lively about it. But what does the industry say about this person? And a lot of times, we're holding the veil for these planners or for these designers because we want to work with them. However, we have to work with them on their terms. That's not always the fairest way. I had mentioned to somebody, I, I haven't seen her here, but I was like, what does quality mean to you with your preferred vendor list? How do I get on your preferred vendor list? So something that I really specialize in is developing vendor SLAs so that people know what it takes to be a preferred vendor at this hotel, what it takes to be a preferred vendor at LLG. Every year, I renew my vendor list. I have a set of criteria that I send a vendor who comes to me and says, hey, I want to work with you. The weddings you do are beautiful. The clients you have are engaging and fun. So I say, I would love to work with you too. Here's the, some of the criteria that we have for floral designers, hair and makeup artists photographers. This is how we accredit the people that we work with so that I'm transparent to each of my clients. And I tell them these are the types of vendors and the quality of vendors that LLG represents. It helps build my community and it eventually helps build my network. And I talk about their reputation, some testimonials from previous clients. These are criteria that I use to evaluate my vendors and I renew this on a yearly basis. And they're signed agreements exchange of service agreements between me and my vendors so I know what their role and responsibility is on the wedding day based on their title, based on what they're contributing to our community. So how do you build your regional and international network? So I'm talking a lot about building this community around you, but what are actionable steps that you can take as individuals in this community that can help build your network? I believe that the key to my success was that I, was, I never operated alone. I depended on the vendors and the services of my vendors to help engage and move me forward and propel me into this industry. I depend on my vendor community to give me referrals. I depend on them to talk about me and give me industry clout. I collaborate with them on events. I go to conferences such as this one. I learn and I network and I meet really cool people and I follow up with them. It's the best way. Everyone that gave me a business card, you will be getting a follow-up from me because I'm a nut job. So <laughs> seriously, I will send a picture, remind you who I am. Maybe I'll send you a cool article that I think pertains to you and your industry in your network, in your region. I go to fam trips. I just recently went on a fam trip in Mexico and Jove Meyer and I work in the same industry. However, we've always just engaged a little bit. We were never really close. When we went to Mexico together, we got drunk, we had a great time, we were all hanging out by the pool, and guess what? We literally went to sushi last night in London. 
It's easy to network and collaborate if you allow yourself to have these open conversations with your vendors so that everyone knows what your role is and what your identity is in your community. Collaborate on a photo shoot. Co-host an event. I just did an event two weeks ago where I was the event planner and someone else was the event stylist. What were our roles and responsibilities? We'll talk about that. I also love working with vendors within my category. Planners working with planners. Designers working with designers. There's, no, there's nothing better than learning about these people and what they do. Find somebody who does it better than you do. I'm not the best designer, and I know I'm not the best event planner, but I know I can absolutely learn from people like yourselves that have been in the industry a lot longer than I have been. Share your ideas, share your knowledge, your techniques. Don't hold them so close. When I started five years ago, the reason I volunteered for free was because nobody wanted to work with me. And in fact, when I reached out to planners in New York City and I said, I will work for you to free to learn, nobody answered me back. So I became competition instead. And that's not the way we need to operate with one another. You don't want to promote that. We should be talking to each other, saying, yes, let, come on in, let me teach you. Let me teach you how to do it the right way, how to price yourself fairly so you don't end up undercutting me in five years when you go off on your own. How many of you participated in a photo shoot this year? I know I did. How many of you did it for free? That's a, that's a problem. I also did free photo shoots. However, I did free photo shoots in a region I've never worked in before because I wanted to expand into Abu Dhabi and Dubai. And as you can see, I did photo shoots, giving it a little American flair, giving it a little femininity, and I decided to do something bold and different because I wanted to expand my network. I wanted to meet new people in Abu Dhabi. I wanted to learn about their culture and tourism. I wanted to learn about what their pricing standards were, what their design team does, what is their design process. Because if I learn, I only become better. I'm only a better planner if I learn from you. I also did a photo shoot at Shangri-La. I did a photo shoot at Zaya Narai Island, and I did a photo shoot at Bab al Qasar. Three totally different hotels with three totally different styles and different key differentiators to this industry. Go back really quick. This, is, um, this was the Shangri La, and this was Zaya Narai Island. And I did ask for vendors in the area if they were willing to host this photo shoot with me. I did ask them to do it for free. But what did I ask in exchange for that? I said, What are you looking to get out of this photo shoot? Are you looking to expand into the American market? Are you looking to get more features? Are you looking to get publicity? I didn't just ask them to do something for me for free. I made sure I was giving something to them. And one of the vendors, the floral designer, said, I've never worked at Zaya Narai Island, and I've been in this industry for over 10 years. You know what I did? I was determined to get us into Zaya Narai Island to give her the ROI she needed to work at Zaya Narai and get that badge of approval from that venue. And I did exactly that. There are better ways to collaborate and promote one another. You can do photo shoots for free, and, I'm okay, and I think that's a good thing, but there has to be some ROI on that photo shoot. So going to my next seat, because I was really torn between either I said community over competition, collaboration over competition, but I really wanted to emphasize how do you collaborate with one another? Play to your vendor's strengths. Find a vendor that you know, you know can make that floral headpiece or can be a better planner to show you different techniques. Find a vendor that dares to be bold and different. I always want to find people that are challenging me so that I can learn something from them. I collaborate with vendors in different markets. This allows me to share audiences with them on social media because I don't have the same audience as some of you in this industry. You guys are obviously have your own clients, you have your own audiences on social media. I want to tap into that because I want them to know about LLG. I am also able to reach a new market this way. Now I have people following me from the UAE. I have hotels wanting to work with me. That would have never happened if I didn't invest in going into Abu Dhabi and doing this photo shoot. I got to learn about a new culture, and that's something to me is priceless. Learning about what it, customs and cultures and wedding traditions all over the world. I get to carry that with me and bring it to New York University and teach my students about the differences between Greek wedding traditions and Italian wedding traditions and Jewish and Catholic. Everybody has their own 
idea of what this looks like in each of these different regions. It's a beautiful thing when we all start sharing. However, you must collaborate with purpose. It's easy to say, yes, let's do a free photo shoot, let's just throw it in there, let's get some flowers on the table, let's go to a hotel. However, it's more difficult to build a narrative. Find a market that you're looking to attract. So when you're collaborating with someone, collaborate with someone new, not necessarily that's been in the same circle. Have a purpose and a defined purpose of why you're doing this photo shoot or event. Is it because you want exposure? Is it because you want features? Do you want to enter a new market? What's the target market you're looking to attract? The Abu Dhabi photo shoot, all of the vendors there said to me, I want to attract an American clientele. Okay, so we need to put out there what Americans want to see and what Americans are attracted to, what American couples are attracted to. So what's the ROI for your business? Always ask yourself this when you're talking about collaboration. This way you're collaborating with a purpose. So this is an example of something that I did almost two years ago, it, well, the Royal Wedding photo shoot. And I chose to take a really big event that I knew was everyone was going to be talking about was the Royal Wedding. Meghan and Harry were getting married and I said, what would this look like if they came to the United States, to New York, and we did a little photo shoot about it. I went to different vendors and I asked them, what do you think Meghan Markle would wear? What do you think the designs behind the scenes would look like? What would the table settings be? What would the invitations look like? I didn't want something white and green. I wanted something bold and colorful and powerful that spoke to different magazines and different people. What was I trying to achieve here? I was trying to get more exposure for my business. I was trying to create content that I wanted to begin attracting. I didn't have these types of weddings at that time. I wasn't building $30,000 trees in a hotel. However, I can now showcase that I did do that and I had the opportunity to learn something new. And guess what? How many publications did we get into? 40? Yeah. It was insane. No, like even the, well, the blogs and everything that we picked it and the reposts that we had. And everybody took pictures of these pictures and then it was part of the conversation when the royal wedding came into the forefront, into the light. I also, last year, tackled a new region besides Abu Dhabi. And I said to myself, I wanna do something where only one other wedding planner has ever achieved. Mindy Weiss was the only planner to have done a wedding, executed a wedding in Bora Bora until me. I decided that I was gonna to go to Bora Bora and I was gonna do something really cool and different and I was gonna showcase how you can promote the local culture and the local vendors through things that they knew how to do. So I also said, what can I do to make this experiential for my client? Let's do something in the water. Bora Bora is known for its crystal clear water. So I put tables in the water and I showed everyone what I was thinking in terms of creating like a fruit cootery display. If you guys know, charcuterie displays were huge this year. Everyone was doing it across the tables and I said, Let's do something with fruit. Fresh fruit, because I know that that's local to Bora Bora. I also wanted to promote wedding business in Bora Bora. I wanted to help their vendors and their locals grow and educate them on different concepts and techniques and themes. I wanted to showcase the musicians and what their attire would be. What would they wear if they could choose what to wear on an event day? And this is Renui and Arrow and they were singing to us and I got to immerse my clients into a local culture all while promoting wedding tourism within that region as well. I also made this event biodegradable. So I decided, and something that is really cool in Bora Bora, is they take these palm leaves and they weave them to create plates. And they use leaves and, and, and eat with their hands. So I thought that would be really cool and feel very authentic to my clients that not only are they coming there for a wedding, but they're taking a piece of it with them. And I successfully did a three-day event there. I brought my whole team and we stayed at the Four Seasons. The wedding was executed at the Four Seasons Bora Bora. And it was one of the most accomplished days that I had felt. I had finally reached a remote island and was able to successfully plan an event in this island. And my clients can't stop raving about it. Oh, and just a little tidbit. I just got a WhatsApp last week from the general manager of the Four Seasons Bora Bora and they replicated this exact design and said we're now selling this as part of a new service and product because you came here and you showed us how to do it. The benefits of collaborating amongst communities. And I know we talked about this today, about communities and, and um, 
commissions, and a lot of people said, well, that might be an American problem. Well, if it's an American problem in an American wedding community, it's also your problem because you're in our community. So don't think you're exempt from something because you're separated by water or because you're separated by boundaries. No, we're all part of the same community. We're all sharing the same ideas. So remember that you're not, you're not exempt from those issues that we're facing in America. So I'm, I apologize that this is small, so I'm gonna read it aloud. What are some of the benefits of building a strong vendor community? Well, you get to expand your vendor network. You have strength in numbers. You build a strong community. You build a strong wedding industry. If we all share ideas and if we all share pricing standards and staffing standards and we all talk about commissions or not commissions, what ends up happening? We get to have growth in new markets. We get consistency. And most important, we get education. And that is something that I'm really focusing on in the United States while building the core curriculum for NYU. It's the first master's in science event management education in the United States. And the reason we're able to do this now versus 20 years ago is because we're starting to finally become consistent with what our brand messaging is. We're talking and having these conversations. How many of you 10 years ago would have really talked about commissions and competition? Not many. But we're finally having these conversations. And to me, that means growth. It means that we have consistency in our market. And today's consumer is looking for transparency and consistency in the wedding marketplace. Clients are challenging us about pricing. They're challenging us about the cost of our services. They want to understand the cost rather than just accept what the cost is. So we need to constantly be educating one another because if we educate our community, we begin consistency and we share these models so that the titles and responsibilities can now be equal. Again, so some takeaways. How do you collaborate? Organize a photo shoot. Be different. Organize a photo shoot with different vendors. Go on a fam trip. Meet new friends. Or build a, a vendor community within a new region. I decided to do weddings in California as well. And I said, how am I going to build that? How am I going to build this vendor community? <laughs> However, with collaboration, there must be knowledge about who you're collaborating with. We have to. Social media really has changed the game for all of us. It has made us all accessible and reachable to one another beyond these conferences. How do we work together? How do we play nice? It's important to verify who you're partnering with and who you're positioning your brands with. If I can't emphasize this enough, a bad brand hurts your reputation. And so it's important to know what does that vendor charge? What does that vendor what is the quality of their service? Define quality for them. Tell them this is what quality looks like to me. It might be different for all of you. We all have different opinions. However, it's important that you build these outlines so that you can build this community. Ask about their process. What does collaborating with them look like? What is their process and how can we enhance it? What does success mean to them? Like I said, I always ask my vendors, what can I do for you to make your job easier? to make your job better. Exposure to new markets. Are they looking for publicity and media? Are they looking to just meet, a, meet new vendors and have new opportunities? Know these things and understand them before you choose to collaborate with these individuals. What are the rules of engagement? I have exchange of service agreements with all of my vendors, and I'm happy to share what those look like. Just because, but I define my vendor agreements differently than other people would. So you are all entitled to have your own opinion on this. However, I think it's important to have a vendor agreement so you know what am I responsible for, what are you responsible for, and now we sign off on this and now we have this exchange. I also created social media policies. I coordinate social media posts so you can get maximum impact and exposure when you work with my events, our editorials, our features. I outline who did what, who did what where, who provided what. I talk about proper vendor handles so everyone receives proper credit and no vendor is misrepresented. There's nothing worse when I see something online that's my work and it, meanwhile the only credit the photographer. That's not fair. But however, make the tagging relevant to what is being portrayed in the picture. The photographer was not the only person part of that event. That makeup artist, that hairstylist, they made that bride and couple look beautiful. That attire is what enhanced the day. That planner is what made it all happen. That designer made it beautiful. These people need to be tagged and credited properly. If we're showcasing the floral design, you don't need to show, you don't need to tag the hair and makeup artist. 
But if you're showcasing the floral design with the couple in front of the floral design, you should because they've contributed to the success of that event beyond the photographer. So when collaborating between two different planning or design companies, outline what each of you is responsible for. This ensures proper communication, transparency, and it builds trust in our community. So for example, I worked with an event stylist, and to be honest with you, I didn't really understand what that meant in comparison to an event designer, but I respected the fact that that was the title she felt that she deserved. So I had asked her, well, tell me a little bit about what you do on the event day. She told me that she would be responsible for the timeline creation for the production team, floral and furniture rentals. She told me that she would be in charge of the event setup, the ceremony and reception. She told me she would be in charge of the styling of the photos, so creating the flat lays, making them really pretty. And she would be in charge of coordinating any supplementary rentals that we were bringing into the venue. I knew based off what she was providing, now what can I provide? I knew that I had to create the rest of the timeline for getting ready for the photo, video, the ceremony, the reception. I had to get all the other vendors on board. I had to be the event lead, that point of contact for all vendors. I knew I had to run that ceremony and reception. And I knew that I ensured that the overall day had to run on time. But now we understood each other's position. And now we understood who's responsible for what and at what point of the day. And now that helps you build a better and stronger community. So I really want you to take away something today about social media and social media agreements. Because what's happening now is a lot of times my photographers are just blasting and featuring my couples and their love story and my clients, but my clients didn't want to be featured. They didn't want their name out in the public. Why didn't anybody contact my client and say, well, it's okay for you to feature this event? But that might have been on me. I practice extreme ownership in my company and I practice extreme accountability. So I know that maybe this is my fault because I didn't present them with an alternative. So now I have. I outline for the client what is a social media policy and I outline it here for you. It's a way of communicating with your clients that you will be using their photos and love story as a means of promotion. For a vendor, a social media policy means a way of communicating your vendors with your clients. What, the, what, sorry. A way of communicating with your vendors how your clients want their photos used and which photos to use for a promotion. Not all my clients think they look good in every photo. I know I don't think I look good in every photo. So tell me what you feel comfortable with me sharing about you and your story and your backgrounds. And worst of all, I had one vendor that shared a story in a background about a client that was receiving a lot of bomb and death threats because they were a high profile client. And they went out there and shared their name and promotion on social media and how it's like, are we joking? Why didn't you call me first? Why didn't you ask me permission to use these photos? They told me that it was a conflict of interest because they were now promoting themselves as event designers and I was an event designer and we couldn't, they didn't want to contact me about it. I alleviate any conflict of interest now because I make sure what is your role, what is my role, and who's submitting what to what publication. Your media policy should also outline who's responsible for taking the photos. I know a lot of wedding photographers don't necessarily want to do event media. They just want to go and take photos of the couple. That's perfectly fine. Are you comfortable with me hiring another photographer for two, three hours to capture the media that I need to promote my event? I have these conversations. I open this dialogue to make sure that we're all on the same page. You should also outline who is responsible for distributing and communicating the event media. Provide all the proper handles and the vendor communication. Outline with, with each feature who was responsible for that event and executing that event. And make sure you have your client's media rights. Do Who owns the photos? Do they? Do you? Do the photographer? Who has copyright? Who can promote these? Do they want to have their photos used on social media? Some of my clients love it. I mean, I had a vendor that came up to me and they were like, oh, you, you know, you keep posting on social media. Well, my clients like that. That's their choice. I actually outline it and give it to them. So they want me to post 10, 15 stories of their event, and that's cool. But there are other clients that I have, they're like, listen, I really, I really like to stay behind the scenes. This was a private day and it's a private ceremony, and I, I reserve the right to keep it private. What about their proposal and love story? I don't want everyone to know how Paul proposed or talk about our relationship all on media. I personally am a very private person. However, some of my clients love to share. Are they comfortable with you using their photos on your website? Don't just assume it, you should ask. 
If you're showcasing them as part of your work as a means of promotion, ask. And write an agreement to avoid miscommunication and confusion, even if it's a, a, a Word document. It's okay, at least you have something that clarifies each person's role and what they're comfortable with on the wedding and sharing post-wedding. So that's it. I hope, any, I hope everyone learns a little something. Does anyone have any questions for me? Yeah. I'm gonna take the mic around, but I do have a question for Lauren. So there was, at the beginning, you said, learn from everybody else. But there is, and we're all the people in the room, I'm gonna make that assumption, but you teach somebody something and then they go rip you off. Design, ideas, techniques. What's, what's the fine line between learning, teaching, and then just going in there for your own underhanded reasons and then taking everything you generously have taught them and then still undercutting you? How do you guard against that? I don't have a good answer for that. To be honest, I don't. And um, it's something very difficult to prepare for. And I think that's a lot of our fear is, comes from the fact that we think people are gonna design steel or price steel or, or client steel. However, I can say that there are so many couples, millions of couples around the world. If it's not working in your market, go to another market, expand. I went to Bora Bora, there was nobody doing weddings there. So now I'm the only one doing weddings. You could all join me. But um, it, it's not an easy question to answer. However, you need to feel comfortable with what you're sharing and what you're teaching. And I chose that decision to go to NYU and show my standards and, and create standards within the education system in the United States. But that was my choice. So I know that my students could eventually become my competition. But to be honest, that would be my greatest achievement that I finally got somebody to learn about event management and teach them what I, nobody ever really taught me. On that, is it then, like you're saying, it's a compliment? Because, I mean, for myself, like I, I work for a company, but my, my boss has known since before I started that in five years from now, I won't be, and I will become, you know, it's gonna be different. And we were talking about the respect of that, and so, I mean, do you then, is the way you outlook on how you do that? Is that your outlook, does that differ between your current competition and your prospective future competition? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I personally, if, if somebody in the community, like let's say Jove Meyer, wherever you are, Jove, um, if, if Jove said to me, well, Lauren, can I come to your company and learn a little bit about LLG and its process? Maybe you can teach me a few things. I'm open to it. I really am, because that way we can now share and exchange processes and exchange ideas. We're in two totally different markets. We have two totally different styles. And someone is, that's gonna hire Jove is not necessarily going to hire me because I maybe have a more feminine you know, aesthetic than he does, or maybe he has a more feminine design aesthetic. However, you should be winning the client not by teaching and showing different processes and techniques. You should be winning the client because you are the better designer for that job. You are the better planner for that job because, because they chose you. It was a personality fit. It was a design fit. It was a pricing fit. It's not necessarily because you know, they stole my process and now they're gonna get more competition or they become competition. Thank you so much.